So, you're probably new to Twisted, wondering, how do I play this game? Well, I'll explain it in depth. Before we get started with anything, we're at the menu screen. We're greeted with a play button, and a server browser, and a Twisted Light button. Press play. If you're on a low-end device such as a phone or an iPad, press the Twisted Light button, and then press play. Now that you're spawned in, let's start with vehicles. These are your best tool because you will drive a lot. We're going to focus on dealership vehicles for right now. There will be a free Chevy 454 SS which has a top speed of 90 miles per hour and you can purchase both upgrades. We'll get to those momentarily. After getting cash, you will have two paths you can take. One for fast vehicles or one for off-roading vehicles. If you're gonna go fast on dirt roads, you can buy a Toyota Tundra, a Chevy Silverado, and a Ford F-150. These are the fastest vehicles on dirt roads when they have lift kits equipped. Or you can buy a Dodge Charger, the fastest vehicle in the game with a top speed of 125 miles per hour, which can also have a Mesonet. After taking either of these paths, you should save up for your first chaser vehicle, which is ideally the Dominator 1. I'll explain these later. And now what mesonets and lift kits are. These are upgrades to your cars. To do this, head to the dealership, click on your car, click garage, and purchase the one you want. Mesonets are devices on your car that read the wind speeds of where you are. This allows you to know if you're about to be lofted by a tornado. It is also a method of making money, which we'll get to soon. Lift kits are a modification you can equip on a truck to go faster on dirt roads. These can be useful as dirt roads can be found everywhere for sh shortcuts. These can be useful as dirt roads can be found everywhere for shortcuts. Speaking of different terrain, never go on grass. This makes you go 20 miles per hour in all vehicles. This can be dangerous and just annoying. The best vehicles in the game are the chaser vehicles. These are built to intercept and go in tornadoes. They have built-in mesonets. You can find them in the warehouse, just below the dealership. These vehicles are much stronger than normal vehicles that get lofted at 95 miles an hour. The Dominator 1 has an undeployed threshold of 125 miles per hour and a max threshold of 165 miles per hour. You have the rest of the Dominators, Dominator 2 and Dominator 3. These are good chaser vehicles because of their fast deploy time. Alongside that are the TIVs. The TIV 1 has an undeployed threshold of 140 and a max of 175. The TIV 2 is the strongest vehicle in the game with a max threshold of winds up to 220 miles per hour. The only downside is the 30 second deploy time. You also have the Dow, aka the Doppler on wheels. This is more of a support vehicle. It makes radar update quicker, makes the radar more accurate, and can scan the wind speeds in a tornado. It is also the most expensive vehicle in the game. We're going to cover money making now, which can be confusing for many new players. We're just going to focus on the best ways of making money, which are probes, driving, and mesonet wind speeds. Probes are high risk, high reward, but only if done right. To buy a probe, go to the warehouse, click on the probes button in the bottom right, and buy one. There will be four different probes. All probes give the same amount of money and they all function the same other than cameras which two probes have. This is mainly if you want to see the tornado without having to intercept with your car. Each vehicle has a different amount of probes it can carry. Once you have probes, go find a tornado and click to place the probe in the path of one. Now, you want the probe to get directly hit by the tornado to get the most money possible. 
Here's some tips for probing tornadoes correctly. Look at where the storm is going and where the tornado is going. If it's moving left or right, then it's going away from you. If it's not moving and it's getting bigger, it's coming for you. If the TVS on radar is an orange, red, or pink, wait to probe it until it strengthens. This is because the higher the wind speeds, the more money you make. We'll get into what a TVS is later. And now, mesonets. Mesonets are an even higher risk with a slightly lower reward of making money. These will make you money whenever they read winds over 60 miles an hour, which goes the same for probes. Be extremely careful when doing this, as you can get lofted and killed if you get too close to a stronger tornado. Moving on to thermodynamics, accessed by clicking the sun icon next to the vehicles tab, these determine how strong the storms are going to be. The current day is always day one. There are six different risks, going from low strength to high strength. In this order, thunderstorm, marginal, slight, enhanced, moderate, and high. Enhanced days usually bring less powerful, more photogenic tornadoes. This also goes for marginal days. Now, moving on how to read everything below that. Dew point and temperature aren't too important for now, so we won't get into that in this video. The CAPE is the most important variable. It stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. This is essentially how much energy is in the air. The higher the CAPE, the better for strong storms. 3 cape is the cape that has 3 kilometers in the sky. The lapse rates are how much the temperature changes with height. If the cape is high, this needs to be high too, or else it will choke the cape to some degree. P watt stands for precipital water. This is how much water there would be if all of the water vapor in a pocket of air was condensed. So it's essentially how much rain there's going to be. We're just going to skip over RH as it's just the humidity. Now, on the right panel of the thermodynamics tab, you have SRH, which stands for Storm Relative Helicity. It's the potential for cyclonic updraft rotation in supercells that are moving right. Anything over 250 SRH increases the chance of tornadoes. Just below that, you have Storm Motion, which consists of the direction the wind is blowing and the wind speeds of how fast it's going. The composites consist of VTP and STP, violent tornado potential and significant tornado potential, which I think is fairly self-explanatory. My understanding of the hodograph isn't very great, but all you want to focus on is the pink and red lines. These basically represent what the storm structure will look like. If it looks like a hook echo, then the storms will have a hook echo. We'll get to what that is in a second. Your radar is your best friend in intercepting tornadoes and storms. It shows you where storms are and where you are. It will help you figure the map out very quickly. You can access it by pressing M for the most convenient experience, or you can click the radar icon on the top bar. Starting, I'll explain the symbols, or the legend that's in the bottom right. For reflectivity, which is just normal radar, you have green, which is light rain, yellow, which is medium rain, and red, which is heavy rain. The whites, purples, the blues, and the black is all hail. Now, onto the next tab of the legend. We have the TVS, also known as Tornado Vortex Signatures. These indicate tornadoes on the ground. There's also a rotation icon at the top, often called a meso or mesocyclone, which is its real name. This indicates a tornado is probably going to touch down. Below that, you have all of the Tornado Vortex Signatures. These do not correspond with the EF scale as that is damage based and not wind speed based. On the next page, I think everything is decently self-explanatory. 
After the legend, there are warning polygons, which activate an EAS tone if you're within the area that's warned, and also predict where a storm or tornado is headed. Yellow polygons are severe thunderstorm warnings, red polygons are tornado warnings, pink polygons are PDS warnings, which stands for Particularly Dangerous Situation. Lastly, pink polygons with a black line in the middle is a tornado emergency, the highest level of tornado warning. These are only issued when a large and destructive tornado is headed for a populated area. You can right-click the polygons to get more information on the warning if you'd like. In the bottom left, there will be information and tools. In the top left, it shows the time in-game. In the top right, that is how much time until the radar imagery is updated. Below that, toggles allow you to toggle details on the map. The Highlight Player tool allows you to highlight players on the map. This is especially helpful if you can't locate yourself on the map and don't know where you are, as you can highlight yourself. The measurement tool can be used to measure distances. The Tornado Tracks tool displays the EF rating, estimated max winds, the path length, the max width of tornado, and the injuries or deaths. Now we have storm structures on radar. In 1.20, hook echoes have been changed to a degree. These will look like a storm is hooking onto itself. When there's a hook echo, that indicates there will most likely be rotation. Remember, you want to position yourself far in front of the hook echo or mesocyclone so you can intercept it. A mistake I see a lot of people make is going directly towards where the tornado is going to touch down. Never do this if you want to intercept a strong tornado because the chances are, as soon as a tornado touches down, it's not going to strengthen. Now back onto radar, press the reflectivity button in the bottom right. This will completely change the radar. Red is moving away from the radar while green is moving towards it. The brighter the color, the faster it's going. There's a bright green and bright red next to each other. This is called the velocity couplet, which signifies rotation. The brighter the colors, the stronger the rotation, the more powerful the tornado. I wouldn't necessarily use this to predict where the storm is going to go, as it isn't very effective. You can see the different wind speeds on the legend in the bottom right. In the update for 1.20, there was a change that added radars into the game. You have KHZL and THIB. KHZL is more long range and stationed at the National Weather Service that is just west of Hazleton, the main city in this game. THIB is north of Hibbing in a shorter range, located at an airport north of Hibbing. You can change these by clicking KHZL or THIB just above reflectivity. And this is our final section, Game Passes. At the time, Twisted has 9 different Game Passes. Infinite Fuel makes it so you never have to buy fuel at a gas station again. This can be enabled in settings in the top right. Q times income doubles the income you make from driving, probing tornadoes, and mesonet wind speeds along with every other method of making money. This is a highly recommended Game Pass if you enjoy the game. The starter pack gives $10,000 and a Ford Expedition XLT with a Mesonet equipped. Custom Vehicle Color allows you to fully customize the color of your vehicle. This can be accessed by going into the garage for your vehicle. This cannot be used on chaser vehicles. The chainsaw allows you to cut down trees in your path. It also rewards a slight amount of money for doing so. Skywarn Spotter Game Pass allows you to report different sized hail and different types of tornadoes. This Game Pass is still available but the National Weather Service Game Pass mainly replaced it. The NWS for National Weather Service Game Pass allows you to place the warning polygons you see on the map. It also allows you to assess damage, which has to be done by a person. This changes the EF rating on the Tornado Tracks tool depending on the damage the tornado caused. The Drone Game Pass allows you to fly one mile from where you currently are before losing signal. This tool allows for cinematic shots and can help get a good look at a storm or tornado. You just get pushed in the wind. The EMS Game Pass allows you to revive or declare NPCs dead after a strong tornado has passed. This also contributes to the injuries or deaths section in the Tornado Tracks tool, similar to the National Weather Service Game Pass. 
And that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If the video was helpful, please leave a like.